Hello everybody, how you doing? Cedric and CJ here, CR Wrestling Commentary, and we will be reviewing AEW New Japan Pro Wrestling Forbidden Door pay-per-view event, uh, which took place, oh, what, seven days ago, Sunday, Long Island, New York. You can see it up on the graphic and all that. Oh my goodness. Okay, so no, this, this I'm not risking uh, doing all-out commentary with AEW or most any wrestling shows unless it just calls for it. I don't have control over that. It just calls for it. So with this, we're just gonna get we're gonna just jump right into it. So the first match features Hechicero versus MJF. Um Hechicero came out with a serious intro. He had a very dramatic intro with flames and the music and everything. MJF. Good way to open the show. Yeah. MJF come out, baby face, got his thing going on. Just don't feel right. I'm like, at the last pay-per-view, what are you talking about? None of this goofy stuff is going to be hate, hate, hate. It's the old MJF. Yeah, but he's also, his his rival is a, is a, a heel now. Yep, and, whenever, and, and he's in Long Island. And whenever MJF does, he keeps very, he tries to keep to the alignment. He does. Yes. So we have to give him a pass on this because they are in Long Island, a place that he's not even headlining, but it's his hometown. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so you had asked, why are they doing this first? Why is he in the first match? So that's in my note there. I wrote, MJF knows this is a shit show and most likely didn't want to get any of it on him. <laughs> and truth, it is good that the first match dictates how the rest of the show is going to go. And set the tone, yes. supposedly. So, I was like, MJF is so beloved, he did a stationary body surf. It's like they tried to get him further, but it was like, you know what, dude? You weigh more than you look. Plus, he needs to, you know, get back to the floor and walk to the ring. But it would have been cool if they body served him all the way down, you know, mm -hmm. all the way down to the ring. That would have been cool. Okay. So, we do watch the match. Hedges said was a clear heel and does a lot of, he does a lot extremely well. He he knows how to wrestle. Hedges is good. It's, it's a step beyond knowing how to wrestle. But just like modern wrestlers, he wastes any potential finishing moves. For example, he hit a lovely, stiff-looking shining wizard in the corner that severely popped the fans and us. And instead of going for the win, he just boasts. He taunts in the ring. You know, it ain't got the fans, but it didn't get the win. You know, or at least go for it. He could have, you know, covered a man something. You know, you remember him running to the corner and slamming that knee right in the MJF? And it sounded and looked wicked. Yeah. And nothing came of it. It's, it's a waste. It's a waste. Hechicero would be a dangerous heel to anyone if he cut the stupid and just wrestled like he was trying to win instead of, you know, putting on the show. As in my notes. MJF hit the Panama Sunrise and then a sheer drop brain bust got the win. Um, in, in one flow for that, the Panama Sunrise and the brain buster, in one flow, he annoyed Adam Cole and Will Ospreay and then got the pin like a heel should. That's what MJF did in, in three motions. Um, Max, he, MJF is a maxed out babyface with no belt, opens the show, and has a good match with a barely known wrestler that Sockface worked hard to put over. The mad scientist. The mad scientist. We don't care. We don't care. You know what a scientist does? Things. You know what they also do while doing those things? They talk. He doesn't do things and he doesn't talk. So he's nothing. <laughs> That's really all it is. And then Cedra knows Hechicero simply stopped wrestling, like putting on the brakes. MJF just got off fence and ended the match. Yeah. And the reason Hechicero is good 
when we first saw him, he was wrestling some other lucha person. So they were doing their lucha thing. That's what they do. But wrestling MJF Echisetto wrestled differently and he had more ground game and he was good. You can see that he is a wrestler. Just like when you watch Pentagon wrestle a non-lucha individual by himself, Pentagon can go. But when in Rome, wherever Rome is, you do as the Romans do. And oftentimes they're going to have to be flexible like that because the promotion dictates what it wants to see. Which goes back to the major problem with AEW because it creates a culture of crap so that people who can wrestle end up having to produce crap. But in this case, H. H. Seto showed that he can wrestle. Yeah, he's got his pageantry associated with his name, his gimmick. Okay, I get that. I appreciate that. But he can wrestle. And he displayed that with MJF. And he displayed it so well that he had to stop his offense altogether. MJF didn't come back. It wasn't, you know, them rooting him back and yada, yada, yada like Ricky Morton. No. It just it just stopped. And then, just like that, MJF went on the offensive, got his 10 hits in the corner, the bite, yada, yada, bing, bang, boom, it was done. Yep. That lets you know how good Echisetto is. Because Echisetto was just going to keep going. He could have just kept wrestling, just being out there wrestling. Mm -hmm. Almost like, how can I say, the moment he stops wrestling, his freedom is gone. Like some people, they run track. When they run, it's freedom to them. It's the greatest moment in their, in their life. And when they stop running, the joy is over. So... Echisetto might be one of those. Like, as soon as the wrestling match is over, the joy is over. Who knows? Because he did good. Mm -hmm. I could see great potential. I mean, as a mass wrestler that don't speak English, I could see how I could use him if I was running my own promotion and make him a mega heel and never have to make a, 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 an utterance of a word. And that's the one great thing about Lucha Libre because most of them are mass wrestlers that sort of barely talk, but they learn to express themselves physically in the ring. But you the won't get, get that here. The wrestlers can get themselves over without talking. It's just they are obsessed with talking and having full-blown the young and the wrestlers storylines. Not, did you just take my stuff? Yeah, okay, it's time to whoop you up for it. You can try. Oh, really? And now we got to fight. No, it's just a bunch. Let's stand out here for 20 or 30 minutes and give one-liners and try to, you know, out verbally joust each other and stuff. It's just boring. Ooh, ooh, he said that. Ugh. Anyway, we get to uh, next match. The Acclaimed and Tanashi Hiroshi versus The Elite. And Hiroshi Tanahashi is the New Japan Pro Wrestling current acting president. And because of that, we're going to try to watch the G1. We're going to try. It's got different people in it. Normally, different that's matchups. the... Our current... The way we work in this house, the way things keep turning out, I don't know if we're going to have the energy and wherewithal to do the G1 like we should. That, that I'm just keeping it straight. We could barely get this out. I still got SmackDown to do. We still got a lot of commentary from the viewers, Zimo and some others that have said something no matter how almost almost no matter how little it is. You know, comments are comments. We want to talk about the comments. You know, we want to validate all of you who validate us. We think it's fair. Think it's right. So we're going to just see, you know, because the G1 is something we wanted to follow. Then we stopped because it got boring, like Tama Tonga said. Yeah, it did. And we didn't care. And then we started seeing, oh, wow, we already know who's going to win. But with the Golden Boy gone, who knows? You know? Uh, both Golden Boys gone. What, what was the other one? Will. Yeah, true that. True that. So that's good. 
get to see what they see how they're going to run New Japan because the G1 lets you know exactly who they view and don't view as worthwhile. Okay. So, uh, I wrote this note. This continues Hiroshi and Kazuchika's rivalry. And by their standard, Okada's team will win this one. Because that's just all that's ever happened. That was my first note. So, Caster's rap was brutal, honest, and hit all points, even throwing the word bitch in there many times to mimic Okada's promos. He even threw out there that the Bucks ruined Okada's career. I think Cass is trying to get fired. <laughs> the acclaimed are now sporting porn stashes. No, nah, it's just... No, nah, both of them. Well, Bowens don't look that don't look any different to me, but... He's always had his. He's always had his to Max thicker. Max got a, But Max... is thick. It almost looks fake. Yeah. It's like, who put that brown chalk on you like that? You know, so... It's like, you know, almost hairless caterpillars. So, I had to note, the main event of this match is when Tanahashi and Okada face off. And I've seen it so many times, I just don't give a damn. If anything, Tanahashi should be after Jay White for tainting his first victory over Okada in New Japan. But then again, it's not like that would matter to mainstream audiences. Sadly, AEW doesn't have a mainstream audience, but the audience doesn't follow New Japan either. Like us. <laughs> we don't follow New Japan anymore. Mm -mm. Um, so Tanahashi and Okada, they do tie up, and it's lackluster due to not having a standard match build. The Bucks tied their shoes to, uh, tighter and then pumped them up like in the 80s. It was stupid then, and it's worse now. After some bad acting in most of their part on, on most of their parts, Okada hit the short range clothesline and pins Tanahashi per usual. There you go. Okada was setting Hiroshi up for another clothesline, but Billy Gunn runs in, saving the life of the New Japan Pro Wrestling president. Matt Jackson, for some reason, backing up says, It's forbidden door. Just relax. It's like, what? I don't know. Literally from those words, what you get is because it's the pay-per-view, because it is Forbidden Door, you should be able to do whatever you want to do and not be worried. It's just all fun, man. That's what I get from that. Like, let's not take this pay-per-view, this match, this thing that allegedly we built up so long for. I get you. I get you trying to come across as heels, but it buries the entity of the pay-per-view. That's what it does. It's just, it's forbidden door, man. Just relax. It's like, you know what? Yeah, let's relax and not watch this. That's what it, that's what it seems to me. Yeah. Okay. So now we get an Owen Hart tournament match. Brian Danielson versus uh, Shingo Takagi. And I wasn't even looking forward to this one too much. Not really. Um... And Cedra was just this match. I, this is one of the few matches where I wish we had just recorded this while watching it. <laughs> Why? What did Cedra say? Oh yeah, I wrote it down. I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna turn this up to hear Nigel bag on Danielson. Oh yeah, <laughs> Nigel can't stand Danielson. Anytime that he commentates a Danielson match, Nigel is usually the most entertaining part because he talks cold cash trash about the clam digger <laughs> all the time, and it's funny because I I call Danielson a lighthouse keeper. He like he ought to be in a lighthouse with a lantern and a hat waiting for the ship of ghosts to come in. <laughs> Is that the Titanic? <laughs> <laughs> Better late than never. <laughs> they both got their stuff in with very light strikes, nearly believable submissions. Takagi got main Japan in, and it was stiff. Very, very lovely looking, but Brian kicked out. Mm -hmm. Since that move doesn't pin anyone anyway. Since Takagi has to go back home, 
He's not winning this. Brian scores the referee stoppage and wins the match. Because I was like, you ain't going to pin Takagi, and he doesn't submit to anybody. And he's a former IWGP heavyweight champion. Mm-hmm. And best of the Super Juniors champion. Uh, well, at least he should have been. He should have been. That was the first black guy of Will Ospreay, to be honest. Threw over a wrench in the works. He decimated the entire field with ease. And then Will Ospreay. The best of Shingo and some juniors. And some yeah. juniors, yes. <laughs> this was a highly competitive squash match. It's only a squash when the victor is 100% assured or roughly 90% guessed. That, that's what makes it a squash match. You know who's going to win this. How long is it going to take? When you, when you can look at a match, like, oh, well, I know who's going to win this. No, I ain't talking about some. it's a wild guess or something. You, you look and be like, okay, I can... Honestly, scientifically, tell you who's going to win and why. That, that, that's pretty much it. And for those that want to know, quick, real brief, it's simply this. Shingo isn't going to stay in the United States, so there's no need for him to be further in the tournament. It's Forbidden Door, and the Forbidden Door is to bring in people from outside the United States. So he's here. It looks good. Danielson can get a win before he retires and that's it yeah he's not staying so th- that's why it was a meaningless match it, literally this was a throwaway match and i don't like that term but it was a throwaway match now we get to the aew women's title mina shirakawa versus tony storm all right so i noted this match is mainly set for Mariah May to choose a friend to stand with. They went through the backlog of everything that happened and you got to make a choice. There was some flubs, there's some blah, 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 and I'm mad and well, be mad. And Tony with her epic, you know, I well, I see myself in your eyes and I love me. Oh yeah, I see myself in you I, and I love me. <laughs> I thought that was great. Tony <laughs> does so well she does so well but they bury it by being okay with it you're not to when someone becomes deranged and stuff like that you're supposed to not go with it to make it legitimate you don't put it over to make it legitimate you go against it to put it over it was working when her opponents were like you are out your damn mind Yes, and now everyone just accepts it. And then when you know she go down to the commentary and say confusing things to them, it worked. But now it was like, hey, she's great, yay, she's our starlet. What's the what? The Joker escaped the asylum, and everyone is like, well, it's time to have fun, boys. Like, yeah, we we're, we're having fun with you. Yep. They're standing, right, though. They're standing outside waiting to get kidnapped and murdered. <laughs> yep. What are you doing out here? Waiting for you to kill us, Joker. He would be so stunned. Yep. Well, thanks for taking the life out of it, Bats. Mm-hmm. And then that, that would have been it. Yeah, he just would have went home. Yep. Disgruntled. Nah, pissed. He would have went home pissed. Yeah, he would. Yeah. <laughs> that sour look dragging the mallet behind him. Mm-hmm. Man, I, all I can see is animated Batman, the animated series Joker. Mm-hmm. That was one of the best ones when it comes to cartoons. They tried the Blanca style Joker. It was all right. Blanca? Street Fighter, Blanca, the, the green dude with the orange hair. Oh, okay. Like the consistent, crouching, incredible Hulk. Yeah. With lightning. Yeah, okay. him. Yeah. And that Joker for whatever. What, what what was it? Batman, the Brave and the Bold? No, 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 no. Oh, wow, no, no, was no. it? No, no, no. It was the other one. Uh, they were trying to bring up the boy. It was it was something else, but Beyond? yeah. Huh? Batman Beyond? Yes. That's how it was, that's how Joker was then. I think that was the one. It was like Ali you, and it was like you could tell it was the same style. It was some kind of mixture, weird, wild joke. But in, okay, we digress. Things we could talk about all day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, that's it. So I wrote. So I wonder when May went to fear with this match and accidentally caused Mina the win because Tony's going to win this. 
Why? Because Mina should be going back home soon. And in one of the uh, previews to this, they, Mina was like, I'm not going home. I'm here to stay. And I'm like, yeah, all right, prove that. Prove that, you know, because they bought you in. You weren't on Dynamite. You was on Ring of Honor. And then you won't. So I, <laughs> I don't know. Um, Storm comes out dressed in Lady Liberty with a torch and the anthem before it goes dark and come back as grayscale. And I get why they're doing it. You know, at first people want to say you just want to be mad. Like you're trying to get heat, you know, against Mina. But no, this is going to air before 4th of July. So you got to do something. You know, it, that's basically all that was. So if anyone thought that Tony Storm was trying to get the goat of Mina Shirakawa, no, it had nothing to do with that. So eventually Mina hit an avalanche DDT and didn't go for the pin. Then she hit an elevated DDT for two count. Yeah. Mina does a long hype up for seated reverse elevated DDT for two count. Tony hit the German suplex, her second best move, because she always delivers that so well. Then she hit Storm Zero and got the pin. It was a very long, competitive squash match with too much silliness from Shirakawa, who had on the strangest ass-pulling-in outfit that I've ever seen. If she had to take a shit, she won't. Yeah, it's a weird outfit. It was weird. Um... Tony hit Storm, zero, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. So after the match, May enters the ring, goes to Tony, looking like the damsel in half distress. Mina stands eventually and rejects a hug from Tony Storm and then offers a crying handshake because that's what they do in stardom and women's wrestling. They cry after a long match, which I just don't always get. The first, when you do it a couple of times, all right, but when you do it almost every big match, it loses the luster. It yeah. just loses the, the, the push that it could have. After the shake, they then hug and then go into a triple kiss. Tony's looking like she has no idea of what's about to happen. She's getting pulled in. She looks like, what, what are we doing? I'm like, anybody pulling you just back what, up? What, what, what are we doing? Like, just back up. Like, yeah, she's like, what are we doing while she's going in with a kiss face? <laughs> so I, I thought that was dumb. I get it could be funny, but I, I just, I'm like, I see this. I want to believe something like I literally know it's all the work and I'm begging them to make me believe something I see on the screen and they can't do it I literally want to be fooled and they can't fool me it am I asking for too much if you know everything maybe the fans are happy so let's move on so now we get to and I think that's where we stopped, right? That was the first hour and a half? Yeah, I think so. It felt like forever. It really did. It felt like forever. So, now we get to I was, Zack Zaber Jr. versus Orange Cassidy. And the, the, the marquee of this match had already pissed me off. And it pissed off Cedra, too. Because it's Zack Sabre Jr., and regardless of what Jim Cornette says, this guy is awesome. He is. Yeah. I'm sorry, I was, I was only thinking negative things about Cornette at the time. So look, the match started off slow and transitioned into more of a slow dance. You go back and watch it. It was a slow start. Zach was slowing himself down for Cassidy. And then it looked more like some kind of slow choreographed do si do and stuff. That's what it looked like. Then they picked up the pace a little bit with a little bit of steam. Cassidy hit a dragon screw and, and, and it stubbed Sabre's toe and kept him from spinning all the way around. So that could have been a possible knee injury. Yeah, it was nasty. Yeah. And I've seen Zach try to work that and it just come across as him almost stumbling. This looked like, uh oh, he might be hurt. Mm -hmm. So if Zach has found a way to do that and it's a work 
and he's not coming close to hurting himself, bravo, bravo. Um, Orange dove onto Zack and hit the dragon screw outside the ring, and then later in the ring, and noted, I'd be more interested in this match if I didn't think Zack should submit Cassie within three minutes. <sighs> yeah. Hmm. Uh, so I'm I'm trying to read my words. I will, I wrote something weird. Um, I don't know what this, I I don't know if the, if I did this or um, but also God yeah, that that yeah, I see it. I'm glad y'all can't see my notes. You'd be like, what did you write? I'd be like, don't worry about that. <laughs> um, I wrote in addition, it's quadition. But in addition, Cassidy's been built as the damage tank of AEW. That's what turns me off of Orange Cassidy. They had a nice leg roll clutch exchange. And with the speed of these transitions, Cassidy had time to put his hands in his pockets before mm -hmm. doing another one. Roll over, roll over, grab you, roll over, roll over, stop. Hands in my pockets. He had to get his, his stuff in. It's it's annoying. Zach eventually goes into his arsenal of multi-limb, grape vining, and Cassidy had to verbally surrender. Which, when Zach started grape vining him and wrapping his arms up and folding his legs and putting him in these half death locks and stuff and, and, and an attempted banana split. In the, well, yeah, he, he tried. He tried. But just it was how can I say this you go from one submission to the other getting jacked up you're gonna just surrender yeah it's rational you know it's it's rational and just bottom barrels Cassidy is not on the level of Zach Sable Jr. not even close and I had to note that ending should have happened way earlier if Zach had lost to Cassidy I would never have watched another AEW event, period. I was thinking the same thing. If, if Zach had lost the cast, I'm like, you know, we can just stop this right now. Forget yep. It. I would have stopped it right then. We would have done this review, and this to us would have been the main event, and we'd have moved on and be like, I'm not watching AEW again. That's exactly how that would have went. The only reason I would have talked about it because I took the time to write it down. And I'd be like, we're done. Because some things are just a far gone conclusion. Yep. So... Thanks to that level of booking, we're gonna we, we we can still be all right. Then we get a tag team match: Samoa Joe, Shibata Kasiori, and Hook versus Jeff Cobb, Big Bill, and Chris Jericho with Brian Keith. Okay, it sounded pathetic for Jericho's voice to lead his intro. You know. Let's yeah. say I am the learning tree. Yeah. And it just sounded so whiny. And then it was worse to hear Jericho in the ring trying to convince the fans that they're supposed to love him. <laughs> I'm like, dude, he sounds like Tony Storm if the fans started hating her to actually hate her, but she never dropped her gimmick. But you, you're supposed to love me. I. I'm marvelous. And do her little poses. They keep booing and she just breaks down crying in a ring and they got to carry her off. Yeah. That's that's how he looked. Um, so not too terrible of a match with the ending being Hook boasting for an elbow strike and then hitting Jericho with the spinning elbow and got the pinfall. Taz stole the show with his commentary. Yeah. Because that was funny. It was... Because, you know, for those that play Fire Pro, Okidi Yabri, because that's what happened, you know, and he, he popped him. And look, Hook did that back elbow better than Jericho. He did. The load up, the spin, the delivery, the sound, it was perfect. It looked like it should hurt. Loved it. 
And Taz was like, he knocked homeboy out. I was I was about done on that one. Yeah. And you could they they kept showing Taz with, laughing. With his joyfully. own move. That's what he said. Yeah, we knocked homeboy out with his own move. I was like, oh. Taz man. over there applauding. Because you know, Taz is the heel commentator. And his son was on the face team, but that didn't amount to a hill of beans. He was cheering his boy on. <laughs> kick the, out, kick out. Yeah, the last half of the match. I, <laughs> all that heel commentary decor went out the window. It did. I was like, that's a that's a father cheering on his son. I was I enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. That is what Taz needs to do with Hook. Screw the baby face heel. No, if he's a heel, make the excuses why he's great. Make it make the excuses of how it's not a bad tactic. That's what the heel commentator is supposed to do. If he's a baby face, talk about how he's got to fight uphill. Talk about you know pretty much the same as the heel, but it's actually legit this time. <laughs> You know, mm-hmm. I would rather see Taz do that. So next, TNT title ladder match. So because of Adam Copeland, the belt has been vacated. And I can't recall anyone mentioning that. I think I there was some sort of package in the beginning. Um, and they showed how he got injured and then the books came out saying they had to do something or other. And this is what they came up with. Look, you were skipping intros, and I was just like, fine, skip them. I didn't care. <laughs> and that was just like a little snippet I saw. Just a little, it was snippets, that's it. I could be wrong. I'm going to go in order with the notes, so just wait for the correction. That's fine. So the participants are Mark Briscoe, Takeshita Konosuke, Dante Martin, El Fantasmo, Leo Rush, Jack Perry. And then note, we've not watched Ring of Honor, so we don't know who Mark Henry lost the belt to. Ring of Honor heavyweight belt. Then note, correction, Mark is still the Ring of Honor champion, and yet he is battling for a novelty title. Yep. And the TNT title is novelty. It's named after a damn channel, a station. That's like the YouTube belt. The Twitch belt, the the Vimo title, <laughs> you know, that, it's, it's, it's stupid. Yeah, this is real. This is supposed to be real, right? You yeah, know, I guess it's supposed to be. The only, the only, and then my next note: the only two people who can win this are Takeshita and Jack Perry. <sighs> Yawning. Let me take a sip of lemonade. Mm. Ah. Okay. So during the match, Takeshi gave a brain buster on Martin on the rim of the folded ladder. Protected or not, that's not good for either of them. Nope. And Martin feigned like his neck was all jacked up, but man, it could have been. It really could have been. Oh, wait, here's a good question. Where's Ricky Stark? He should have been in this match and winning this belt. You have a novelty belt that they're trying to get over and be great. Put someone great in there. Phantasmo used the purple nurple atop the ladder because he's a serious guy at the apex of nearly winning the match. And you know, but you know what? I didn't mind because it was on Jack Perry. I mind it because we're supposed to be taking this seriously. We're well past that, Jerry. So, Dante was pushed off the ladder with Martin. Uh, no, with uh, who was he up there with? Fantasmo, I think. I think so. And he was clutching his left foot in great agony. The display of pain should have made it so that he couldn't even continue the match. In any case, everyone was worried that he re-injured the ankle that wasn't broken in the first place. You remember that? Yeah. But they tried to make a distinguish that was it, was it his left leg or his right leg? Like, oh, it was right. You know, they they tried to hash that out. The commentators did. And I'm like, look, this dude is is holding his leg and he is all jacked up. He shouldn't even continue. But, but he they, did. He was walking around like nothing happened. Yeah, you see, he saw hunker down in the corner watching the action. It was just down the floor. Just sucky, just sucky. Hey, guess what? You just suffered a possible leg injury or. 
severely bruised leg. You know what you do? You get on the floor and you hold it. The trainers come and look at it. You get your boot off. They take a look at it. It's like, okay, it's just bruised. You get your boot back on. They wrap it up a little bit on the outside. Show that they put something on there to compress it. You get back in the match. There you go. It's not hard. It's <laughs> not hard. Oh, my gosh. Whoo. Okay. So, Kanosuke got the pop of the match with a perfect blue thunder bomb from the apron to the tables on the floor. It was beautiful. He put El Fantasma through the tables flawlessly with that blue thunder bomb. But the table shattered in a way that I was scared because one of those legs was sticking up and that could have really messed up someone's back punching a lung or something like that. Yeah. So that they, they need to stop table spots because the tables are shattering like they're just not even real, like it's some kind of paper mache. And with and when the tables don't break and push the legs away, that right there can injure you or kill you. And you would never see it. Or they can suffer an injury and never even know it. Like Undertaker, Mark Calloway, he had a broken neck, never knew it, and it healed. Really? Yep. Oh man. They thought it was a modern injury. It's like, no, no, this 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 happened a while ago. That's crazy. Uh-huh. Did it heal wrong? No. I mean, I don't know. They, they didn't go into that too much. Okay. Um, so, the fans, with that move, the fans are way up. They're cheering their heads off. And Konosuke was stopped from victory. They, they had it. The fans were right there. Yep. They were right there. Best move. Popped. The fans are like, get up there. Mm -hmm. They are cheering. They are pushing. And then let's foil that. Yep. Killed it. Killed if, it. If Konosuke had won it, that place would have popped. Yes. Mark did the J-Driller on Takeshita on the ladder. That's nice. Yeah. Jack stops Mark, beats on him with a chair, steps on his back to begin the climb to the ladder, and he gets the belt. So he's the new champion. Yeah. Like I said, Konosuke or Jack. <laughs> and I know this was a waste of time for everyone and was totally disrespectful to Mark, the current Ring of Honor champion, who should have been able to turn his nose up to this match as well as be protected from stupid matches like this to prepare to defend his main belt. You know, you're going to sacrifice everything as world champion to go after a novelty belt. Didn't even come out with his Ring of Honor belt on. I didn't, I, see, it. I didn't see his entrance, so I couldn't tell you. Which is terrible. It was terrible. He won't even he was barely even in the match. Barely even in it. Next we get title versus title. New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong Women's title versus the Turner Broadcasting System title. Yeah. Stephanie Vaquer versus Mercedes Monet. You want to add my prediction? What, what was yours? I said, oh, so Monet is going to win the, the, the New Japan Women's Strong Belt. I remember you saying that. Mm -hmm. I remember just being quiet because it was like, well, how wrong could she be? You said it might go to a draw. Yeah. I, it mm. might. I said might. Just, you know, so there could be a sort of it's not ended. No one won. No one lost. It's down the middle. But the fans hate a draw. And because the fans hate a draw, the company won't give them a draw. Because they don't know how to use a draw properly anyway. So, <sighs> what I wrote was they paid way too much money for Monet for her to lose so get it over with. And I said that halfway through the match. I was I wasn't I was watching these Stephanie and I'm like, she's good. And I was trying to explain to Cedra how I've seen Vakur just in CMLL and AAA just when someone messes up, she's like, I'm not gonna be there for your mess up. <laughs> I will step back and let you mess up and then I'll stomp you, but I'm not gonna sit here and participate in your stupid. So that's what I was looking for because Mercedes Monet has a lot of stupid. But yeah. 
Yeah. The fans are 100% behind Vakur, just like every other outsider on the show. It took a while, but Monet won. The fans were not interested. Nope. They were booing while she was wrestling. They were booing when she won. Her match was like pulling teeth. It just think it went on and on. It was a very long-winded, how can I say, fluke match because Stephanie whooped her ass. When you watch the match, Stephanie dominated. Stephanie looked good. She looked polished. She let she knew what she was doing the whole time. Monet looked like everything she did had to be set up to do it. Just the simplest stuff. Um, it, she got some moves in, but she didn't pro wrestle. And at the end, there were some cheers because of the in-ring boasting. When she would, when Monet would lift the title and stuff like that. You can hear that there were some cheers because that's what the fans do. They're just programmed for that. But then it was mixed with jeers uh-huh. because they did not want to see this. Nope. And when you hear it, it sounds odd. Yeah. And you was like, I don't know what sound that is. Well, it's the sound of love because music hit and the fans erupt because Britt Baker comes out. She doesn't do anything. But... She's there. Yep. And she's got that smirk. She looks healthy. Yep. The look in her eyes is more like, I can't wait to get in that ring. And she had to, every time her, her pyro went off, she would go to the ring like, I'm ready. It's like, no, get out your program. Because, like, you hear the pyro, let's get to the ring and wrestle. It's like, no. Did you hear this part of the music? Get to the ring and wrestle. She's like, no. She was fighting her instincts. I enjoyed seeing that. That showed me that she's ready to come back and wrestle. Problem is, they're going to probably wait for Wembley for her to get one of those belts off, the TBS belt, the Jade Cargill belt, that bitch shows belt. Mm -hmm. And, well, they're going to wait for then for her to get it, which would make no sense because if I was Brit, I wouldn't be going after that belt. Mercedes Monet can have that shit. That's how you can keep your Turner Broadcasting Systems title, that novelty belt. I want to go after something that's recognized. That's what I want. Jay spent a while building that belt up with Tony Khan, and even though she did, no one, no fan was like, that belt is prestigious. No, no, it wasn't about winning the belt, it was about beating Jade. There's a difference. There's a major difference. What's more important, winning that belt or beating Jade? You beat Jade, winning the belt is a pri- is, a, is, a, is a byproduct. Yeah. You know, but now Jade is gone. You think she's coming back to AEW? No. If something happens and she becomes a problem backstage or something, they get rid of her, fine. She'll come back to AEW. But outside of that, she's going to stay in WWE where she can build prestige, a legacy, and all of that. So, you know, that that's what this is. So, Britt Baker's back. Configulations, as would be said in Final Fantasy XI. Configulations, indeed. So, IWGP title match. Naito <sighs> Tetsuya versus Goon. What happened to the belt? It looks dirty. It painted with cheap black paint. Yeah, like it was run over or someone held it in front of the exhaust of a diesel truck too long. Has it always looked like that? No, but Takagi had that thing was bright and shiny. But was it the same belt? It was the same style with the, the ugly crown looking thing, yes. Looks like Moxie just took it and damned it all to hell and it's like, well, this is what's left of it. Oh, anyway. <laughs> um, so at some point, they were up top, barely doing anything, and then Naito slipped through and shoved Goon off the top rope to the floor. Okay. Naito stalked the spot he needed, but Goon was in the right spot, but Naito was on the wrong side of the ring. 
So this is when they tried to do their WWE moment and go through the barricade. It failed miserably. Mm-hmm. Naito got a piece of the railing and just smiled while beating on Goon. He laughed, and it was more like the obvious that this is all some stupid shit. Naito would just laugh. You could see him like, man, I'm having fun. This is fun. Because you can't play this off. This is just all stupid. You could see it. I've seen him do that with Okada on one occasion. I haven't seen him do that with anyone else. The fans are trying to be into it, but they are failing. It seems to me that they are so uneducated on wrestling, they don't know how to respond or who to cheer for. It could be something else, but at the moment, I can't figure it out. Um, Naito hit a version of Destino, but it seems clear the audience doesn't understand the laid out version is not the finished version. Naito, I'm going to let y'all know this. When Naito does the reverse somersault into the DDT, the reverse DDT, yeah, and he is fully laid out, that ain't it. No, it's not. If he does it and he's seated or he's tucked in tight, that's, that's it. it. So that's what I look for. When I, when I saw him do that and it was laid out, I was like, well, he's about to kick out. <sighs> so, do, so Goon, he had his DDT that he never does the same anyway. And it looked like he almost broke Naito's neck. It did. Naito kicked out in a form of a convulsing or something. Which is, he just convulsed strongly and he never got his shoulders off the mat. But I guess it was enough for Red Shoes to be like, I guess she kicked out, man. Goon was angry, so he got a chair. He set it up in the ring, Red Shoes removed it, and that got a positive pop from the fans. How much did they love Red Shoes? Because any other ref would have done that, they'd have booed him. <sighs> you about going to sleep, Cedra? No. I saw that leg wiggling. <laughs> and you done got quiet. <sighs> What's going on? Do I need to finish this alone? No, go ahead. Just goon sucks. Naito hit the Northern Light Bomb and then Destino and got the pin. And that Destino, it was a little tuck, but not what I'm used to seeing. That's because goon don't do anything right. He, Naito can't get that move all by himself. And Goon almost absolutely refused to sell anything. So Naito's ever only going to get a little piece of it. I had to note, this was the only reason I watched this, to see Naito win the belt he should have had ages ago and never lost in the past three years. The fans are happy, and then they go silent. Literally, yay! That's how it is. You, you can't pipe in silence. And somewhere out there in the world needs to tell me why goons... Was it Death Rider? Yeah. Never looks the same way twice. I can see if he does it normal, normal, then elevate it, then maybe off the middle rope and off the top rope. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, sometimes it looks like he just rolls them over. Yeah. And then sometimes like he about to break their damn neck. And he gets side screaming, Death Rider! It's, not, it's something. Uh, and Paradigm Shift. Are they both the same move? It looks like it. I don't. Uh huh. I don't know. Yeah, it's like that. So next we get the main event of the evening: AEW title match. Will Ospreay, the international title holder, versus Swerve Strickland, the current reigning AEW World Champion. And I had to note, Swerve was on the left side as a challenger when they showed the graphics. On Dynamite, Osprey offered to defeat to defend the belt that Swerve has. Letting us know the outcome. Number three, Osprey gets a theatrical entrance, and he is, you know, he's he's paying homage to Hayabusa, who Osprey used to do his moves quite a bit. So, when we first heard about that, listening to Jim Cornette, I remember, I remember thinking, okay, they're gonna have to change the outcome of this match. Will Ospreay can't win everything. No, he can't. can't win every damn match. 
Cause that that right there makes wrestling boring. Yeah, it does. Um, no point on watching. You know who's gonna win. Will Ospreay basically went up. Hey man, bartender, give me a beer, and this jackass paying for it. That's what he did when he offered to defend the world belt, and he didn't even have it. So I was like, all right, we're gonna see how this go. And you know what, guys? I was stunned with this match a bit. Now, granted, Jim Jones, whoever him be, introduces Swerve, and it was lackluster. Yep, and I felt highly lackluster. It was it was dim. It was really dim. And it was a long match. Swerve looked good when it came out though, but he, he always does a good entrance, his gear and all that stuff. Uh huh. Even Nana looked good. Nana always looked good. No, no, always look good. I, uh, I couldn't enjoy this match as much as I should have because, to be honest with everybody, I was waiting for the stupid. I was really, there were some things that I thought weren't necessary in this match, like the, uh, the Frankensteiner off the barricade. And the power driver on the barricade. Yeah, I didn't see that. I just you you mentioned it. I heard the crowd half pop on that. Um, but I heard Sockface heavily pop on it. So I was waiting because I told I told Cedar I said the way Will is and what Swerve will allow others to do. I'm wanting to, I'm, I'm waiting to see Will hurt himself. That's what I was waiting on. But uh, there was an epic spot with a diving double foot stomp by Swerve on the wheel on the outside, landing on the table. Will was on his feet when that happened. Mm-hmm. That was awesome. I've yeah. never seen that before. This is not to say it hasn't happened before. I've never seen it before. Yeah, just never seen it before. It was it was good. Um, and I wrote that would have made for an amazing injury angle victory. Will will be too hurt to enter the ring. Count out. Or he's injured. Stop the match. And then make a comeback in London and win the title. You know, only problem with it, it looked really safe. Yes, but it still could have been put over as an injury angle. Later, Strickland used the hidden blade and it looked amazing. He used that. I said, good. I was like, that. You need to add that to your arsenal, bro. Yes. Um, Will hit a crossbody over him and hitting the ref, so the ref was out. This fell into a heap. Osprey landed the hidden blade, but the ref was out. And then Don Callis comes out and hands him a screwdriver. At that point, I was like, that's how stupid all of you are. It's so stupid. Look, if you are a fan, and you see that screwdriver come out and you pop forward and get scared by it, you need to go do some mental checks. <laughs> you are messed up in the head if you ever think that's going to... What do they do? It's been over a decade of the screwdriver spot. Stab the top of the turnbuckle, right? Mm-hmm. But then if they're going to g- g- get after the wrestler, they don't do it like that. They use the handle mm-hmm. or they miss or they cup the 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 sharp side in their hand I'm like it's, it's so stupid yeah you, you literally the way they do it for the corner if you're gonna really stab somebody with you're gonna pierce their heart their lung <laughs> you know you're gonna go into their brain it's, you, they're dead yeah it's gonna change the scope of the match a bit you're gonna stab through their leg or their arm and it's gonna look horrible Sabu would be like look I, I remember wrapping up my my bicep and tape but that was stupid <laughs> uh, so um, Nana knocks out Callus. Will corners Nana outside with the screwdriver then Will backs off and drops the weapon like I can't do this mm-hmm. before returning to the ring Swerve hits the house call Rev comes in is Aubrey just as he hits the foot stomp the count the fans are there. Will kicks out. House call. Will kicks out. Osprey is wobbly and can't fight. 
but no ref would stop the match because reasons. And then I noted right then because Will was like wobbly all over himself. And then he, I think that's when he just leaned on uh, uh, the, the, the clavicle of Strickland. Mm -hmm. And I wrote, JML Driver would be good. Mm -hmm. Swerve hits house call, and then the JML Driver got the pin. Yay. Tony Khan did well booking Swerve to win. I didn't think he was going to win. Me neither. I oh, like Osprey wins everything. Yeah. And they probably have to change it after Osprey's crap promo. I don't for it. Tony does not have that ability to create continuity. I don't think he would have changed it. I, I just hope that they let Swerve retain it through Wembley. Me too. Swerve should have that belt for a while until someone can come up and be a legitimate challenge. But if they did it right, Swerve should be a heel. MJF shouldn't even be challenging him. Kenny Omega, he could come back with a slightly different offense. That's not going to happen. Yeah, I know. And he could beat Swerve. That would be fine. And then after three or four months, MJF would beat Omega. After six or seven months, Osprey could beat MJF as a babyface. After maybe eight or nine months or six title defenses, he might lose it to Samoa Joe or Swerve. Something like that. You know? Anybody but the Adams. Yeah. No Adams, please. So, I, I like Swerve as champion. He looks cool. He's carrying it well. But I can easily tell that he is in a flux of, am I a baby face or a heel? Or am I just out here doing stuff? Yeah. You can see it. Because AEW isn't about disposition. It's about what pops the fans and what pleases Tony Khan. Tony Khan is reliving his Attitude Era best that he can. You know the one thing in this that pleased me? What? No one bled. Yes! No one bled. No one Not bled. One this whole... single solitary person shed a drop of blood. Exact. Girl, you call that out. No I didn't bled. think about that. I was waiting for Goon to bleed. He didn't. I was yeah, like, something's wrong. I couldn't say anything. I had to wait to the end of the match because, you know, swear if he'll bleed in a minute, too. Yeah. I had to yeah. wait. All right, then. Well, you know what, y'all? That's going to do it. It's been a, almost an hour. I didn't think it was going to go that long. But, hey, it's been Cedric Cedric for CRS and Commentary doing our review for Forbidden Door, AEW's pay-per-view, where... Well, Swerve kept the belt he shouldn't have to lose at least until sometime next year. But with that said, we want y'all to be cool, be chill, be safe. And with that, we'll see you next time.